And speaking of basketball, you had an issue with Jalen Brown, right? Not making the Olympic team? Listen, Grant Hill. And Grant Hill, my favorite NBA player of all time. Kobe's the GOAT, right? Outside of GOAT status, Rashid Wallace was my favorite college prayer player and NBA player. I think he's arguably the second greatest power forward to ever play the game. He was better than Barkley. Just as good as, if not better than Garnett. Maybe a step behind Tim Duncan, but I'm not even sure about that. I believe Rashid Wallace may have been the greatest power forward of all time. He was putting up Shaq numbers against Shaq. Unguardable. One of the only power forwards with a three. Look at Rashid Wallace's game. He had no weaknesses. But Rashid Wallace, like Allen Iverson, they were not company men. And because Rashi Wallace was not a company man, they left him off for the top 75 greatest NBA players of all time. Rashi Wallace has yet to get into the Hall of Fame. Allen Iverson has yet to be offered even a general manager's job because they don't dance to nobody's tune but they own. That's the problem with Jalen Brown. Grant Hill lied, and I like Grant Hill. I didn't finish my statement. After Rashi Wallace, Grant Hill would have been my favorite college player. I believe Grant Hill may have ended up becoming the GOAT behind or before Mike, behind and before Kobe had his ankle never got messed up. If you remember Grant Hill in the first couple of years yeah, in the NBA. The injuries, he was a beast, man. He was a beast. Grant Hill was going to be the GOAT. Grant Hill was going to be the GOAT until he got injured. And I just want like, Grant Hill to know he's a liar, even though I like him as a black wife, beautiful wife. But Grant Hill is a liar. Grant Hill said the reason Jalen Brown got snubbed was because of basketball. It was a total basketball decision. Grant Hill stopped lying. Brian Windhorse, NBA commentator, he also said it was a basketball decision. What Brian Windhorse said, kind of to what I think Grant Hill was alluding to, is they already have enough wing players on uh, Team USA. They need some big men and they need some pure guards. Jalen Brown is more of a wing player. He's more of an off-two, three-man. OK, they need fours, fives, ones and twos. Jalen Brown is more of like a three. Nonsense. Jalen Brown can play the two. He can play the three. You know what I mean? He's flexible enough to do both positions. That's not why he got snubbed, because he's a wing and they need bigs and guards. Jalen Brown got snubbed because the NBA, the, the, the teams of the NBA, nearly half of them are owned by European Jews. I'm just going to keep it honest. The NBA has more European Jewish owners than any other sports league in America. The NBA is ran by the untouchables. That's why Kyrie got into so much smoke, because most of the teams are owned, at least nearly half of the teams are owned by untouchables. Now, there's only three untouchable players in the NBA. There's only three, zero untouchable coaches. But at least half of the NBA's teams are owned by the untouchables. That's why Jalen Brown got snubbed, because about five months ago, Jalen Brown dropped about 34 points in a game wearing either during the game or just before the game an armband that said free Gaza, free Gaza. Jalen Brown walked into the arena with a free Gaza band. He either he might have played with the band, but either way, he dropped 34 points that night. You understand? And then after that, then when he said he was going to use his new contract money to help build a black Wall Street, and then he sided with Kyrie Irving when Nike dropped Kyrie, and then when the royal family came to one of the Boston Celtics home games and they asked Jalen Brown post game, what did he feel about the royal family being in the audience? And he said, this was just another game to me. That's why Jalen Brown got stuff. All of the above, but the main reason you supported Palestine and the NBA's teams are owned by Jews. That's why he's not on Team USA. And it speaks to the fact that black athletes don't have power, Art. They're not powerful. People say, yeah, the black athlete, they ain't got no power. What did LeBron James do? So when Israel start duking it out with Palestine, he jumped his ass on the internet and make sure Israel knew I'm with y'all. What did Money Mayweather do? Money Mayweather jumped on there and said, I'm with Israel. Sent a whole plane full of supplies over there. I don't know if he ever did that for an American city. Did Floyd Mayweather do that for Hurricane Katrina? Did he do that for Hurricane Harvey? He damn sure did it for Israel. And I like Floyd Money Mayweather, but I cannot condone cooning 
by any black man at all for any reason at any time. So although I like LeBron as a person, father, black, white, black children, although I like Money Mayweather as a person, probably the greatest pound for pound boxer of all time until Javante Davis overtakes his 50 old, 50 and old, 51 and old record. Because I think Tank, if he never loses, and I hope he never does, because Tank is my favorite boxer, Tank is going to go down as the greatest pound for pound of all time. He's going to take Money Mayweather's position. Tank is going to take it. Tank is going to he take gotta it. He got to fight better competition, bro. I agree. I agree. But let's not act like let's not act like Mayweather didn't duck some folks in a prom, though. Let's not act like Mayweather didn't duck some folks in a prom. But here's the biggest reason why I'm going to give it to Tank. Two reasons. He's more humble than Mayweather. Much more humble. And he's a much more powerful fighter. Mayweather was finesse. Don't get me wrong. Mayweather knocked you on your ass in his early years. But he didn't have the punching power of a Javante Tank Davis. He was not the punching powerhouse of a Javante Tank Davis. He ain't doing nothing with the not. power. He ain't fighting nobody, bro. Well, you can only fight what's there. You know what I mean? But they coming. They coming. I just think, don't get me wrong. He got a long way to go, but he there. He on course. Tank going to be the greatest of all time if he don't lose. Tank is going to be one of the greatest of all time if he don't lose. I mean, Shakur you know Stevenson saying? there. I mean, Devin Haney I like there. Shakur. Shakur got to get more power. And I want Shakur Stevenson. I like Shakur too. You know, when he proposed to his black queen in the ring, married that young sister, hopefully they still together. I tip my hat off to that young brother because being a boxer, being prominent, being a young, attractive brother, he could easily just play the field and be a play and be out there. That brother married his baby mom, put a ring on it. Shout out to Shakur Stevenson for that. But I do want Shakur Stevenson to stop going back and forth with people on the internet. You can't be thin skinned if you're going to be in a public space. It's, I got to deal with that. I'm in a public space. You can't be thin skinned. People are going to talk about you. They're going to make up lies about you. They're going to throw dirt at you. You got to be able to take it in stride, bro. And with that, with the whole Mason Cameron thing, I didn't like it too much. I didn't like it. I like Cameron. I think the dip set sound was a very powerful sound that was underrated. I think Mace is one of the greatest lyricists of all time. One on one lyrics, Mace, few people could touch him. I remember back in the day, I was hoping him and Jada kiss to do an album together. But here's what I want to say to Cameron and Mace. We are in our 40s. Shakur Stevens, how old is Shakur Stevenson? Probably about 21. I want to say that he got to be in his late 20s. Right. We old enough to be his father. Cameron is old enough to be Shakur's father. Mace is old enough to be Shakur's father. Dr. Umar is old enough to be Shakur's father. Don't insult the young brother. Educate him and bring him along. When Cameron said, I'll smack, what'd he say? I'll smack the, the taste out your mouth or whatever. Don't do that, Cam. And I don't believe Cam would really actually do that. I think he's a stand-up guy. I don't think Mace would actually do that. I think he's a stand-up guy as well. But what I don't, we the OGs now. We ain't elders yet. We got another quarter of a century before we become elders. But we the OGs. And as the OGs to the brothers in their 20s and their 30s, because we in our 40s, we supposed to be bringing them along. We shouldn't be publicly trying to humiliate them, you know, negatively criticize them. I think Cam and Mace had a right to say what they said. They had a right to say what they said. They were not the only people who said what they said. But I felt that they could have been a little bit more thoughtful in their remarks. They could have been a little bit more diplomatic because a lot of people liked them. They followed them. They listened to them. We grew up on them. You know what I'm saying? So my two of the biggest artists of the early 2000s. So my thing is to Mason Cam, don't be little to brother. He doing his thing. He boxing. If you think he boring, keep that to yourself. He's he's involved in it. He ain't on the street selling dope. He ain't hustling cars. He ain't beating women. He ain't running credit cards. You know what I mean? The brother is engaged in a respectable profession like the two of you brothers are engaged in a respectable profession. Let that brother do him. Don't threaten him. Don't smack him down. Big him up. I would just wish that Cam and Mace don't go there with the next generation, man. They should be looking up to us. They should be coming to us. We should not be publicly humiliating our brothers. And Shakur shouldn't be going back and forth with the me because if you're going to threaten somebody older than you who got some street experience, you know what I mean? You can't be upset when they clap back at you. 
my whole thing with Shakur, with Jay Prince, with Mason Cam, let's just keep it on social media. Keep it fun. You know what I mean? Let nobody get, you know, take it personal. Let's not get out of character. Let's not let our egos run away from us. And let's just let the situation simmer down because I don't want that to go somewhere where it don't have to go. Just let the young brother do him. And I do think Tank needs to fight the brother, though. Tank needs to get a brother a box. He been asking. He been begging. You know, I think he got to fight Lomachenko next. That's going to be a fight, you know, but I heard Lomachenko might sit down for Tank to take on Shakur Stevenson. If that's the case, Tank, get a brother a fight. But I got to say this to Shakur, though. Tank is probably the face of boxing right now. He is. You can't talk trash on the face of boxing and expect him to throw you an olive branch. So this is my criticism for Shakur Stevenson. You can't be talking reckless about Tank when Tank is the one who's going to decide if you ever see him inside the ring, bro. See, Shakur won it both ways. He talking shit on Tank, and he want Tank to give him a payday and a chance to take his belt. If you talking crap on me, why would I give you a chance to take me out in the ring? Remember when Muhammad Ali came to Philadelphia right here and asked Joe Frazier for a fight? Ali came to Frazier with humility. Ali came to Frazier as a friend. Ali came to Frazier as a colleague and a buddy. He didn't go on social media. Of course, they didn't have it back then because I'm sure Ali would have been on it. But Ali didn't go to social media and try to embarrass Joe Frazier into a bout. He did a little of that, but they made that thing happen behind closed doors. Shakur needs to do the same thing with Tank. Stop beefing with him on media. Handle it like a gentleman. It's time. Sometimes it's time to be a gangster. Sometimes you got to be a gentleman. It's time to be a gentleman. And I want Mason Cam to remain the gentleman that they are, especially when dealing with our younger brothers. Who's the best fighter that Javante fought? I think it'll be Lomachenko that I know of. I don't know every person. I don't know every person Tank fought. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of his fights. I don't know everybody he fought, but to me, I feel Lomachenko is probably going to give him the best run. Um, who, who would you throw out there? I don't know his earlier fights. Who were some of those strong? That's the sad part. I guess the best fighter he fought was the pit bull, okay. dude, the Mexican guy. Yeah, the Cruz dude. I think that was the best one. I think that was the best one. I saw them highlights. That was a that was a war. That was a war. Tank came out of that, but that was a war. That's the only person I can really name, bro. The dude not fighting. But here's nobody, the question bro. though, in Tank's defense though, Art, who is he duck? Like who should he be fighting? He should be fighting Devin Haney, uh, Shakur Stevenson. Um I'm gonna be honest, and I like Devin Haney. Shout out to Devin Haney and his dad. He should be the fighter, Devin no Haney. matter what Wyatt Garcia did to him. I agree with you. Yeah, you still gotta he get in the needs ring to with fight him, Devin. I agree with you. But Devin, honestly, he lost the fight to Lomachenko. And you know, I ain't never going against my race for nobody. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm going to be honest, Lomachenko, I felt, bested Devin in that fight. I really do. If I'm going to call a spade a spade, I think Lomachenko bested Devin. And, um, you know, so with that being said, you know, I'm still Devin, you know, I'm still glad Devin undefeated or whatnot. But if I'm going to call a spade a spade, I think Lomachenko edged him. Devin got to do a little better with his prep. He got to do a little better with his prep. I'm not going to fault him too much uh, with, with the Ryan Garcia, you know, because he was taking steroids or whatever he was taking. Clearly something was going on. You could tell, you know what I mean? So I'm glad he still got his clean record. But I need Devin and his dad focus a little less on social media and get ready. Cause you got some wars coming. You know what I mean? If you got if you're going to get in there with tank, you got some wars coming. And right now I can't take Devin over tank. I can't take Shakur over tank either, but because I'm a fan of all three of them young brothers, I'm a fan of tank. I'm a fan of Devin. I'm a fan of uh, Shakur Stevenson as well. Obviously tank being my favorite, you know what I'm saying? But I don't think Shakur or Devin are ready for tank right now. I think they are doing too much social media and they need to get, get into that gym and get ready. Cause when you go against tank, you got to be ready. Tank is everything people say he is, and then some. Get ready for that.